Hello, I'm Ashley, and I'm going to talk about a project that's a collaboration between myself and my advisor, Dr. Greg Wilson at Oregon State, Dr. Joshua Simmons and Dr. Kristen Splinter from the Water Research Laboratory at UNSW Sydney, and Dr. Tyler Hesser, who's at Erdic at the Army Corps. And we're working on recognizing beach states from Argus images using a convolutional neural network. So what's a beach state? Beach states are a categorization scheme for nearshore morphology. It's a way to describe the nearshore morphology and associated physical processes. For example, the beach to the left has many lines of sandbars and therefore has a wide surf zone and many breakers. In contrast, the beach to the right has a rhythmic shoreline, breakers closer to shore, and rip currents extending beyond the surf zone. The beach to the left would be called dissipative, and the one to the right would be called transverse bar rip. Using these categories, we can immediately get an idea of what's going on at the beach, and therefore we know the level of hazard or nutrient dispersion for a given day. The background wave climate and geology, like sediment grain size, will dictate which beach state is most common for a given location, but the beach can evolve between states temporally and spatially. This framework was first developed by Wright and Short in 1984. A few examples of their sketches of beach states and their associated physical processes are on the left, and the corresponding Argus imagery is on the right. During their observational study, they observed the nearshore morphology evolve over time and noted which sandbar and shoreline configurations were most persistent. Then they associated each of these configurations with distinct physical processes and categorized them into different classifications. Argus imagery can be used to observe these beach states because time averaged wave breaking illuminates the sandbar shapes. In this study, I'll be using a machine learning algorithm to classify sandbar shapes into beach states. The data from this study comes from two locations, Narrabeen, which is located in Sydney, Australia, and Duck, North Carolina, which is located on the east coast of the US. The imagery from Narrabeen comes from the southern end of an embayed beach, and the imagery from Duck comes from the north side of the pier at the Army Corps Field Research Facility, which is an exposed open coastline. Both locations are most often in an intermediate bar state and evolve between five different states. But because the Narrabeen location is sheltered by the southern wave energy due to a southern headland, it is exposed to a less energetic annual wave energy and therefore resides in a somewhat lower intermediate bar state. We'll be feeding Argus imagery into the CNN and asking for it to predict beach state that it identifies in the image. Here's an Argus image where the back shore is on top. I'm going to be asking two separate questions. How well can the CNN identify beach state at a certain location individually? And then how well can it transfer to the other? meaning how well can it predict beach state at the second location given that it's learned about beach state from the first location. Here's some example imagery from each of the locations. Narrabeen is on the left, outlined in red, and duck is on the right, outlined in blue. In each of the boxes, the first column shows Argus imagery for three separate classes, and on the right column, it shows the same image with some pixels highlighted. And these pixels show which regions of the image were most important for the CNN to make its categorization. They confirm that the CNN is looking in the right locations. The CNN is looking where we would look if we were to make a categorization, and that is the shoreline and the sandbar patterns that are illuminated by the wave breaking. I want to note that I fed these images directly into the CNN, so that includes the black triangles at Narrabeen and even the differences in color histogram at Duck. So my training data encompasses 3,000 images per location. For each state, I have 100 labeled images, and then I use data augmentation to increase the labeled data set size. In data augmentation, that includes things like vertical and horizontal flips or erasing random parts of the image. It makes the CNN think that it's looking at different images when really it's being fed the same image, and it's a cheap way to increase the data set size without me having to label more images. So for each state, I have 500 augmented images, 
and 100 original images, which gives me 600 images per state and a total of 3,000 images per location. The testing data set encompassed 25 labeled images for each state, so that meant 125 images per location. For this testing data set, we also had the co-authors label the images, and that did two things. First of all, it validated that I labeled the images correctly. So if the majority agreed that the image was labeled at the, at the same state, then we know that I did a good, good job labeling the training data set. Also, it set a human benchmark, which we could compare the CNN performance to. The CNN experiments encompass two different types of experiments, and the first were the self-tests. In the self-tests, the CNNs were tr trained and tested at the same location. So the Duck CNN was trained at Duck and tested at Duck. Narrabeen CNN was trained at Narrabeen and tested at Narrabeen. And then I had a combined CNN. In the combined CNN, I trained it on half of the data set was from Duck, so 1,500 images from Duck and 1,500 images from Narrabeen, and it was tested at both locations. I should also note that I used CNN ensembles because there's stochasticity in the training and the random initial seeding of the CNNs. So all of the results you'll see today have a confidence interval associated with it. Now for the transfer tests, we're looking to see how well the CNN can use the information that it learned from one location to make predictions at the second location. So the Duck CNN trained at Duck was tested at Narrabeen, and the Narrabeen CNN trained at Narrabeen was tested at Duck. The results of the CNN performance are quantified using an F-score, which is a global skill score. For this skill score, it ranges from zero to one, and higher means better. That's on the y-axis. The x-axis shows the training site, and the boxes are colored by testing location, with Narrabeen and Salmon and Duck and Blue. The horizontal dashed lines show the f-score for the human agreement tests. So that's that human benchmark that we set when we had the humans label, when we had the co-authors label the testing data set. The first thing we can see is that higher skill scores were reached at Duck than at Narrabeen for both the CNN and the co-author agreement. And that implies that Beach State is more obvious at Duck than at Narrabeen, meaning the Beach State labeling was more easily made at Duck than at Narrabeen. The next thing that we can see is that for the self-tests, so the Narrabeen CNN tested at Narrabeen and the Duck CNN tested at Duck, the CNNs reach a skill that's comparable to the human agreement. We can't say the same thing about the transfer tests. We can see a reduction in skill score when the CNN is transferred to the other location. However, the CNN, the Narrabeen CNN skill score reduces less than the Duck CNN skill score, which means that the Narrabeen CNN made more accurate predictions of beach state at Duck than this Duck CNN made at Narrabeen. This implies that the information learned at Narrabeen about Beach State is more informative than the information learned at, at Duck about Beach State. We can dig in to see how the CNN performed for each state by looking at a confusion table. In a confusion table, the truth, or the labels that I made, are counted here in the rows, and the predictions that the CNN made are counted in the columns. If there's agreement, then they're counted on the diagonal. And if there's not agreement, then it's counted in the off diagonal based on the CNN's prediction relative to the truth. We can see in this confusion table that the CNN performed lowest for the transverse bar rip state at 63%. And there are two main reasons for there being confusion between states. And the first is that adjacent states look similar. And that's to say that a transverse bar rip state might look a bit like a low tide terrace if the morphology is evolving towards that state. So for example, here's a transverse bar rip state. And in this state, we have exaggerated rip channels. This is also a transverse bar rip state, but the, the rip currents aren't as exaggerated and some of them are filled in to start establishing a bit of a terrace. So in this case, this is TBR, or transverse bar rip, but it's somewhat low tide terracy. 
And these were the images that were confused as low tide terrace. And these images, the ones that had really well-defined rip currents, were labeled correctly. Now, if we take a look and see how the Narrabeen CNN performed at Narrabeen, then we can see overall that there's more confusion. The accuracy, these numbers within the diagonal, are lower. The greatest confusion occurs for the rhythmic bar beach state, and that's most often confused for longshore bar trough. Here's an example of a rhythmic bar beach state. There's a trough, somewhat continuous trough, and a rhythmic sandbar that's located offshore. Here's another example of a rhythmic bar beach state. And in this case, the rhythmicity is less, and there's a bit of a linear sandbar located offshore on the left-hand side of the image. This is an example of a confusion arising due to longshore variability of beach state, where one image might actually have two different beach states in it, depending on which side of the image you look at. So in conclusion, CNNs were trained to identify bar states at two different locations. The first was an embayed beach at Narrabeen in Australia, and the second was an open coastline at the field research facility in Duck, North Carolina. The CNNs performed well, which means that they performed, they had skill that was comparable to the co-author labeling agreement in self-tests, which means when they were trained and tested at the same location. They did not transfer as well, so we saw a reduction in skill score when a CNN that was trained on one location was tested at the other location. This means that the information about beach state at one location does not necessarily apply when, prediction, when predicting beach state at the second location. This transferability does depend on where it was trained. Finally, we saw some confusion between states due to two different reasons. The first was that adjacent states might look similar. And the second reason was that one image might encompass two different beach states due to longshore variability. So for future work, I'd like to develop a continuous beach state framework. This framework would expect that the nearshore morphology might evolve between states and allow for that. So that means that a beach state wouldn't be discrete, but actually a weighted combination of the different beach states. Additionally, more locations could be included in training to see how well it transfers to other locations and what the training data set composition would have to look like for ad adequate skill. So I'd like to thank my sponsors at ERDIC, the Engineer Research and Development Center at the Army Corps. Thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, please ask me during the session, or you can email me at my email address here. Thank you.